Well, hey, YouTube. Welcome back, my friends, once again to Jack's Tech Hut. Guys, I wanted to show you around a little bit about uh, Linux Mint here, 21.3, and they have labeled this release Virginia. And it is a beta release. So what does beta mean? Obviously, I wouldn't put this into production just quite yet. Uh, fire it up on a virtual machine and have a look around. So, you know, in looking at Linux Mint's uh, blog site, I found that they were releasing this beta version. And I thought I would bring it to you guys out there on YouTube just to have a look around a little bit. And, you know, talk about it and show you a little bit of the, uh, the interface, which hasn't changed much. But we'll get to that in just a minute. So, first of all, Linux Mint 21.3 has long-term support. Uh, it's going to be supported until 2027. All right, that's a long time from now, right? 2027. It comes with updated software and brings uh, refinements to many new features uh, to make your desktop even more comfortable to use. Now, if you've never read the Linux Mint uh, blog, I would definitely suggest to go there, check it out, and see what's going on, you know, uh, what they have coming out. It's just, there's a lot of information. If you are a Linux Mint fan, then great. If you're not, check it out anyway. You know, you might want to see what's, uh, what's new. So... There is a what's new section here uh, for an overview of new features. Please visit. You can go to this part of the blog and you can actually look down here and see. Uh, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. Um, it tells you about the hype, hypo tricks, which I played a little bit with this. It's supposed to be a live TV. You know, the feed's okay. I mean, some of the feed works, some of it doesn't. So you have to play around with that. But it's just a way you can uh, check out some broadcast TV, uh, some movies, and even some series. Okay. You can create custom channels now. That's pretty nice. Um, but, you know, that's some of the stuff in it. The cinnamon add-on. Uh, there's add-ons now called Spices, where you can uh, add different features. And, you know, these are the features you're looking at. is applets. Okay. Uh, desklets. Extensions. Obviously, we love our extensions. And themes. So, there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, it tells you here how you can make uh, bootable USB sticks from right inside the application. Uh, Cinnamon talks about uh, managing your applications and so forth and so on. Okay. Now the requirements have not gone up a whole lot, so you still need uh, 2 gigs of RAM. 4 gigs is recommended for comfortable use, and I would recommend 4 gigs. I have ran this with 2 gigs on a virtual machine. It's not very impressive. Uh, 20 gigs of space, 100 gigs is recommended because you're going to be loading applications. So at least have 100 gigabytes uh, for applications. 1024 by 768 resolution or lower, and you can do lower resolutions. I'm doing um, 1920 by 1080. Uh, it works very well, and it's 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 running uh, well, and you'll see it run there. Um, some update instructions they have here for you. I'm not going to read all this to you. It does talk about bug reporting, and if you're using beta software, you know, if you find something that's out of the ordinary, go ahead and respond and just put a bug in there and let them know that something needs to be fixed. Now, it says create one issue per bug, so read the bug report. Maybe somebody reported on something that you're looking at and see if it's already been reported and then report it. That just helps the, the software developers try to get through those bug reports a little bit faster without a lot of duplicates. Uh, remember the beta phase uh, is literally about squashing bugs, right? That's what they want to do. It gives you places to download it. It gives you a lot of different mirrors. You can download the ISO and that's exactly what I did. I just pulled the ISO now. All right. So there you go. All the different uh, places you can pull it all over the world so no matter where you're located at there's going to be some place close to you to pull that from all right without further ado we're going to go ahead and i'm going to open it up here and we are going to make this full screen once again let me just do that now we're going to switch over and there we are there's the desktop now when the desktop first launches you're going to get the welcome screen and it's going to tell you about some first steps uh, let's see here welcome to the new operating system and you can hit let's go it's going to give you the first steps desktop colors you can launch i did do this system snapshots which is, is a nice feature you know actually windows really doesn't even have a way to do snapshots so it's nice to see that linux and the team over at linux mint 
is putting some extra effort into snapshots and I, I'm not even sure if other distros of Linux uh, has snapshots or not but it just allows you to do um, okay snapshot like we do on virtual machines so you can take a snapshot of a system and it does it automatically for you if you launch this thing uh, needs my super secret password so if you launch this thing you can see where I set up my snapshots to run all right so if you create it you can go here it's going to sync with your system first. It's going to look at your system to see <clears throat> how much space is needed uh, to do your uh, snapshots. Is what it's looking at. Okay, we're going to just cancel this. We're going to let that go for now. I'll look at some settings here and see if we can't see. Here's a schedule. And this schedule I have set up right now is for two dailies. And... Uh, to keep one boot right so if anything happens to your Linux uh, distribution and it won't boot at least we know then we have a snapshot of the boot process where we can restore that or hopefully we can restore it with a uh, live disk and get your uh, computer back up and running like it should be you can back up users files uh, I did not set that up I didn't uh, they're excluded at this point uh, just for limitations of space and I really use this machine really for anything again. It's beta So it's something you might just want to look at and play around with to see how it runs. All right, so uh, Let's go back to settings here Nope, all right, so we'll go back out of here It has a driver manager uh, Checks driver manager recommended for additional drivers for your computer. So that's really nice You know Years ago, I started playing with Linux, man, with like Red Hat 1 or whatever, Red Hat version, whatever it was. It used to come out in magazines. You'd buy Linux magazine and there'd be a, a CD, actually, or a DVD, I believe CD at that time, it was in the back of the magazine and you can actually pull that out and install it. And, you know, it wasn't really user friendly. Today, it's getting much better. Update manager, uh, system settings, software manager. And a firewall okay so everything comes up right away there's documentation you can launch this does launch in a web page uh, it's a PDF it launches in the actual Firefox uh, again new features talks about the different new features and release notes there's web forums obviously to get help there's also IRC chat rooms where you can log into and get some help there and they definitely ask you to contribute if you cannot contribute to uh, Linux or any of your distros by programming, you can always distribute. You can always uh, help out maybe with documentation if you're good at typing and learn to do some uh, technical documentation. That's always fun to do. Or if nothing else, you know, give them a donation, ten, fifteen, twenty-five dollars. Throw it their way and help them out because you know what? It's just going to make the software that we use that much better. All right, so I'm going to close that out. Just want to give you a walk through that and let you see a little bit of that. So we're going to go down. The start menu has not really changed. Uh, the file manager, I didn't see any changes in the file manager. When it comes up, it still looks the same. Uh, you can go to properties here. And uh, I don't see anything new in there. View. So really all this stuff is pretty much the same. It's going to preferences. Here's some of the preferences you can have. There's behaviors, uh, displays, so you can set your date a different way. There's a lot of different things you can do here, but I haven't really played around a whole lot with that. I wanted to see if I can click on a folder, and yes, you can set the folder to any color you wish. So let's change this one to this. There you go. Okay, and then you can have your downloads folder, maybe a different color, and we'll make it this color. So to me, that's nice, where you can uh, customize all your folders. And, you know, a lot of times, even when if you're using Windows, and I, I refer to Windows because I told you guys I've worked with Windows for a lot of years, uh, actually been a systems administrator, and now I'm an educator. So for a lot of years, I've been working with Windows, and there's a lot of this stuff that has to be like add-ons or extensions. It's all just built in here. The update manager came up because it would like me to update. I'm click OK here, but we're not going to update anything right now. That would make the video way too long. Uh, a newer version of the update manager is available, so I have to load that. 
Okay, so you can make different uh, changes in here. It will see your network. And you click on network. This is your Windows network, which probably can't mount it anyway right now. So that's okay. All right. It comes with the Firefox browser. But let's go into the uh, menu. Here's the menu. Now you can see where you have all applications, accessories. They really didn't change this at all. Uh, it seems to flow pretty nicely. I can't say anything bad about it. I did open up, I always like to open up LibreOffice Writer just to see how fast it'll load and uh, how responsive the applications are to a new uh, distribution of Linux. And uh, I did turn on one of the uh, subscribers, and thank you for the information, mentioned about uh, turning on acceleration, and I did turn on uh, video acceleration for my virtual machines to kind of help give them a little bit more uh, speed and uh, it hasn't really changed a whole lot especially on this so there you go now you can see that's the first time I launched it so we're gonna get rid of the release notes I never have like this uh, text bounding box you see that box there it says uh, text bounding let's go to view shut that off I never like that I don't know why that bothers me so much let's just go ahead and we're gonna close this now let's reopen it Let's close it and then we'll see if we can reopen it see if it'll launch any faster the second time around and yeah it definitely opened a lot faster there so once you have that initial uh, fire up of the software then the software knows how to respond and it'll work it'll work very well for you okay the next thing I was looking for here is uh, like I said under graphics or some drawing tools internet office sound and video uh, rhythm boxes in there uh, you know, I don't really use a whole lot of sound and video stuff on these outside of screen recordings. Administration, there's a lot of administrative tools that you can use in here. So that's always nice to do. Preferences, then we got places, which are pretty much it, the ones in the file manager. And then you got recent files, which I have none. Um, let's just see if how that would work. Uh, just out of curiosity, let's open up a writer file here. And I will type, this is my new Linux Mint install. And I'm going to save that. So let's save it. And we're going to save it, of course, to documents. And we'll just change this to uh, my Linux. And save it as a uh, ODT format. All right. Then we're just going to close this. The reason I was, I just wanted to make sure that this is picking up recent files and there we go my Linux my Linux ODT of my Linux so it did pick it up you can type in terminal that works very well if I just type I can uh, launch my terminal do all that stuff uh, you can run your sudo apt updates You can run all your updates just like you normally would and pull your update packages down, then run your upgrade. So everything still works with the app uh, APT package manager. So yeah, so far so good. I mean, you know, I haven't seen any bugs. I haven't played with it a whole lot, obviously, just a couple, uh, couple days here uh, since I loaded it. And I just wanted to show it around a little bit to you guys. So, you know, thanks to all the new subscribers out there again to, uh, and all of you that, uh, you know, have been subscribed to the channel. I appreciate it. It's a very new channel. It's a channel that I'm trying to get off the ground. And um, just see what you guys like. You know, maybe leave in the comments something you want me to look at. And um, the, there is a video coming out Wednesday. And it was from a subscriber's um, recommendation. So that will be out on Wednesday. And uh, it's covering... Fedora security. So if you're interested in Fedora security, you want to check that video out. But I did want to show you Linux Mint here and uh, just to show you around a little bit of the new version 21.3. Uh, again, code name Virginia. All right, guys, thank you for taking this uh, first look here with me with Linux Mint 21.3, the beta release. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, Steve Jobs always says, Stay curious. Guys and girls out there, take care. Thank you for being here. I hope that you uh, give this a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I will talk to you next time right here on Jack's Tech Hut. See you next time. Bye for now.